Welcome to the We Are Wake Tech Podcast with your host, Wake Tech President, Dr. Scott Rawls. Hi, I'm Scott Rawls, and I'm the host for the We Are Wake Tech Podcast, the official podcast for Wake Tech Community College. Today, we're excited to have joining us Dr. Keith Babushchek, provost for our information technology programs, and also our chief campus officer for our RTP Research Triangle Park campus. Keith joins us to talk about the many opportunities that exist for IT students in our region, the great number of jobs that exist in our region, and the role that Wake Tech plays to help students ladder into those jobs and continue to degrees and opportunities for career progression. So here's our interview with Keith Babushchek. Welcome, it's great to have you today. Thanks, Scott, glad to be here. You know, before we get started, and and as we start, one of the things I want to do today is talk a little bit about something, a term we use here. We talk about laddering. Sometimes I use the term ladder economics. And I think our information technology programs have been at the the forefront of this. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. But before we get into it, we like to know about our guest and and what brought you to Wake Tech. Tell us a little bit about, you know, Keith Babushchek before Wake Tech and and how you came to be here uh, at Wake Tech. Yeah, that's great. No, I've been at Wake Tech for about three and a half years now. Um, my prior career really has been in, in K-12 career and technical education. Um, I ran career and tech ed programs in two different public school districts, one in Massachusetts and one in New York. And I also worked with state education departments in both of those states. Um, most recently in the um, the district I was in in upstate New York, uh, we had one of the first rounds of the P-TECH programs. So we had a P-TECH high school that was focused specifically on IT programs um, and, and had a good relationship with IBM getting all of those started. So um, that was exciting and my family made a move down to, to North Carolina and um, got my first position here as a department head at Wake Tech and have, have kind of moved up and really enjoyed being here since I started. Well, you've been doing a great job. We're fortunate that you are in this region and to be in technology, IT. I mean, what a what a place to be. The, where you are right now, uh, our RTP campus is right uh, almost literally across the street from Research Triangle Park and very close to where Apple will be building their new site as well as right next door to Lenovo and to Credit Suisse is right down. So you're you're right in the hub of technology and your campus is the hub for both IT and biotech for us. And today we're talking about IT more. Uh, And IT, our information technology programs, have been a leader for us in what we call laddering. And and to us, that's the notion of being able to start uh, with skills training or start in high school, uh, be able to get a foothold in the workplace, but to keep moving forward, move forward in terms of our degrees, which in IT have a lot of breadth and depth at at Wake Tech, but even move beyond that to our university partners. So we're going to kind of talk through that just a little bit today. But you know, these are big programs. I think Wake Tech could be the largest IT education program in this region. We have over 5,000 just degree students in IT, not counting the the non-degree, and have, you know, a great advantage for our programs, bring tremendous diversity to the IT world. So can you talk a little bit about that scale and also the diversity of information technology students for, for Wake Tech? Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. We have over 5,000 students in our degree and certificate programs and all of our credit bearing degree programs. And then we have almost 1,000 students over the past year in our non-credit programs. Um, so, so the diversity of our programs match relatively well overall the county demographics as well. So, you know, we're providing those um, diverse graduates that other four-year institutions are asking for to have a diverse student population, as well as um, the businesses we partner with are really valuing and continuing to invest in and value um, for for a diverse workforce. And so, so you know, they're bringing them in. Our students are diverse. Our faculty and and, and leadership in the division is also diverse. Um, and our relationships, um, you know, in the past year or so, we've developed um, a really strong relationship with NCANT, with NC Central. We're in some great conversations with Shaw right now um, for a relationship. So, so diversity is key for us, and and we're continuing to look at at the makeup of our student population and make sure that the enrollment and graduation um, definitely provides the diversity that everyone's looking for right now and supporting. 
for, for many students, particularly working students or those who are making a transition where they need to quickly get into a job or improve sometimes their job opportunities within um, a, a career, short-term training can be important. Uh, gaining certifications, you're doing some innovative things in your area in this regard. Uh, first, the, the power packs. Talk about what the power packs mean and, and what that brings to the table. Sure. So one one of the things we've done um, now that non credit is directly um, connected to our credit programs, which which was really important for us to do as an institution, is make that connection. Um, the power packs are short term training, about uh, four to six month kind of blocks of training that lead toward certifications and job outcomes. And and so you know one of the first power packs is IC, IT support technician. And someone can take that course in part-time study uh, four to six months. And at the end, they end up with their A-plus certification. Um, and that's the certification needed to start working in, in, as a help desk, as a help desk support technician. Also, that A-plus certification counts as two courses in the degree program should a student decide to go on and, and move into our degree programs. Um, if, if you go from there and maybe do a network support technician power pack, you earn um, the CompTIA Net Plus and Security Plus certifications, and those count toward the degree program as well. So kind of that those power packs do two things. They, they combine together certifications that matter for career your first job or career advancement and they also connect directly into the degree programs as well and there and the pricing too for our non-degree a lot of folks may not realize but because of the way we're supported and supported to to provide these programs at a very economical rate uh can be many hours of training but at a very low rate typically 150 dollars or less for the overall courses yeah, you can, we can get in and, and I think that, you know, one of the things we say is our CCNA course, which is Cisco Certified Network Associate, that's a very strong um, industry credential and our cost for just the course of that is a couple hundred bucks. So, you know, people can spend thousands of dollars, especially if you look at boot camps, um, tens and thousands of dollars to get the same kind of training that we can offer for less than a thousand dollars. And you mentioned CompTIA, so a goal with the power packs is they all lead to third party certifications, industry demand, uh, alternative credentials that are set up through industry. And uh, one of the partners has been CompTIA, and I know you've had some unique partnerships with CompTIA recently, or the CompTIA Foundation. Can you talk a little bit about that and that opportunity? Yeah, um, they're, we're working really closely with them. And, and one thing we're working on them with is uh, employability and soft skills credential. Um, they partnered with us recently to do a, a work out a revamp and do some piloting of that credential um, of, that, of that curriculum. So, so we're not just graduating students from our certificate pro our certification programs in non credit with technical skills. We're also including lessons about, you know, how to get a job, how to keep the job, communication, um, teamwork resume writing, all of those things that are really necessary on top of the technical skills. Um, and so CompTIA is working very closely. That was important to me because we want that validation from a company like CompTIA to, to use that curriculum and that validation to give our students the best experience and the recognition of other companies that would hire our students that would recognize the CompTIA name. Well, and certainly, IT skills training, you hear about it all the time. It's a good foothold into the workplace. And sometimes we've heard CEOs and others within the technology world say, you know, we don't care as much about degrees. We we really care about skills. And they're very legitimate about when they say that. Although sometimes we do find that when it comes time for promotion, uh, when it comes time to working with HR departments and so, you know, degrees do matter. And one of the things I think we've been trying to say, well, why do you have to choose? And I think that's been unique in your work because these non-degree programs, as we say, ladder opportunities into the degree, meaning you can take that credit and keep moving forward to a degree. Can you, can you talk about that connection? Because that's an important connection that you've really worked through in terms of our non-degree to degree information technology opportunities. Yeah, you know, when I think of myself as a student as, as first and put myself in the student's place and think about, you know, how do we create opportunities where you aren't just met with a stop 
all of a sudden you kind of take a class and now you've got to stop and you can't go anywhere. And, and that's what we're really trying to avoid. And so with the power packs, for example, um, students can take a couple of courses, earn certifications that lead into our degree programs that then lead on to four year institutions and articulation agreements with universities if people want to continue that. So the people can continue along their studies as long as they want to. Any point along there, they can also find a job and kind of stay in that job for a while, knowing that they also then have the opportunity to keep going if they'd like to. So a path could be someone comes in and takes our IT support technician power pack they they get that they get their a plus they may start an entry level job as a level one help desk person and then a couple years later decide i really want to continue on for my associate's degree well that certification still counts for the two courses and then they can continue on get a better job pause for a little while then maybe go on to a university so we really tried to think about those ladders and paths um, in ways where people just kind of complete something and aren't met with a stop, that they have many opportunities, not just at that decision point, but later on in their future too. Wake Tech is, when I when I tell people about Wake Tech in terms of information technology, is it has unique depth and breadth. I mean, the programs are deep, but there's also a breadth of information technology programs that you are not gonna find in terms of degree areas at other community colleges. And, and we've been kind of leaders in, in starting programs like game development and analytics and depth and others like software and networking and cyber. So can you talk about that depth and breadth of the IT programs and, and how they're stackable, if you will? Sure. And that, that's one of the things I love about Wake Tech is that we're able to be responsive to the industry. And if you look at the breadth and depth of the industry around, We've created programs that meet that breadth and depth. You've got um, Epic Games located here and many other um, game development companies that are spinoffs of Epic. We have a fantastic simulation and game development program. Um, and that was a lead, it's a leader in the nation. Um, we had a partner, um, NetApp came to us and was talking about the need for virtualization and the industry around us with cloud computing. We created our cloud infrastructure degree to meet that need. Cybersecurity is growing. We have over a thousand students in our cybersecurity degree right now. So all of that put together, we have from programming, analytics, cloud, cybersecurity. If I kind of list out all of the names, I'm going to leave one off. Um, but you know, you can do everything from programming, hardware support, desktop support, data science and analytics, game development, web, graphics, um, the, the, we have 10 different programs in all those areas, and, and we, we support also office administration and medical office administration, too, in our division. And your division and your faculty have been innovative, and in many cases, first in the country, first in the world in, in some ways. the you know I'm just thinking through a few areas. The first community college analytics program, the blockchain program with IBM was a first. The, now our work with the Business Roundtable on their credential for um, showing that students who walk out of programs, in most cases universities, but our program for a community college have skills that employers are looking for and, and gives them legs up. Um, those have been unique for community colleges. Can you talk about some of those? That Because that shows the depth and the strength of these programs. So there's the breadth and the depth. Yeah, and that's, you know, we, we have two um, NSF grants with simulation and game development, working with Epic Games. Um, we were the first um, program kind of worldwide to work with IBM on a co-branded badge. So we offered a blockchain course where students could earn three badges with IBM and IBM would recognize those badges in hiring and promotional decisions. So they worked with us on that. The CompTIA work on employability skills in IT, they came to, we came to them and they're working with us on, on those pieces. Business analytics and the business roundtable is a fantastic relationship. That relationship actually where our first certi certificate in business analytics aligns directly to regional standards for, for data science. That's actually brought us great relationships with other institutions, including Chapel Hill. You know, UNC is talking to me right now about how do we connect our students to Chapel Hill? And that's a fantastic conversation. So we are a center for academic excellence in cyber defense um, and have those relationships with cybersecurity. 
So we have fantastic programs and we also have recognized programs, as you're saying, whether they're federal recognitions or local recognitions, um, recognitions by industry partners. We're, we're the place people are going to to find good programs and good students to fill jobs. And, and just throwing out a couple more here quickly. You mentioned cybersecurity. Uh, we became what's called a CAE2Y, right. a Center for Academic Excellence in Cybersecurity by the um, uh, Department of Homeland Security. And, and can you talk about what that means for cyber? Yeah, that, that was a fantastic. It was we worked really hard for that. And it really means that our cybersecurity program aligns with national standards, the 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 NICE standards, the cybersecurity education standards. So we are aligned to the same standards that many other of the prominent two and four year schools are in, in North Carolina and around the nation. Um, and that gives us opportunities to, to earn grants and do outreach as well. So that was kind of a, a national recognition of the strength of our cybersecurity program. And then one last thing before we turn, because I want you to get, you got a lot to brag about. So <laughs> to make sure, and this one we just learned about the end of last week huge new opportunity with cloud computing and a, and a new grant that that we just learned about the end of last week talk about yeah, that. that that's fantastic and I, I, our, our cloud infrastructure degree is definitely on the move um, we're very unique with the cloud infrastructure degree because we're that degree doesn't just focus on individual cloud platforms it isn't like an Amazon or IBM Google we have great relationships with those partners and we're doing other things with them but this is really a cloud degree focused on on-premises cloud data storage um, and support and what this grant's going to allow us to do is further strengthen that program but also start doing some outreach and and that's something that's really key for me as well how do we give back to the community and especially support small to medium-sized businesses um, women and minority owned businesses um, and so we're looking with this as our first foray into that by actually hiring on our own students as work-based learning students to provide cloud consulting support for small and medium-sized businesses with a focus on minority and women-owned businesses um, to provide them those supports to just learn about what they can do in the cloud and why cloud solutions might be for them. Well, that was a huge win for, for Wake Tech and, and your division and receiving a, a National Science Foundation grant around cloud computing, so congratulations. Thank now, you brought up a few things in the conversation, and let's let's play on those because those are pieces or what we say rungs of the ladder as well. And so one you just mentioned was work-based learning, and that's been a key um, partnership that we've had with different companies that has allowed our students sometimes to get into opportunities that maybe they would not have had that opportunity had not it been for that work-based learning opportunity. And now we have our first apprenticeship uh, opportunity as well with IT. So can you talk about what that's meant and what that does mean and, and opportunities for the future? Yeah, about uh, two years ago, we actually doubled our number of students on work-based learning um, because we added it as a part of every one of our degree programs. And so we had a great relationship with Lenovo, who also helped us out with that, and they provided um, a number of interns, um, and they also provided the supports for those interns, too. Um, the best thing about our interns is they're ready to get to work. They're, they're not looking for an exploratory experience. Um, they're really ready to get to work and help businesses, you know, meet their bottom line and solve their business cases. So, you know, they'll get in. Um, we have fantastic relationships with many companies. Um, we actually hired on a work-based learning instructor just to support the growth of work-based learning. And so we have many students that are out there, you know, getting jobs, getting that first experience and the companies are hiring them on full time afterward. And that's really providing that um, that extra boost to to get students um, into work. Also, our partners are realizing that, you know, if they kind of put out a general call for for filling positions, that they're kind of fishing in the same pond as everybody else. But if they get our students early through work-based learning, they get a leg up and, and get the best of our students early before kind of throwing throwing out there where everyone else is fishing at the same time. Well, some of my favorite student stories have been about work-based learning IT students and just the opportunities, and, and not just the opportunities that they've received, but the opportunities that they provide to the companies that they're they're going to. And so, you know, great relationships, Lenovo being a key partner in that regard. Um, now, 
first apprenticeship program too with i think hcl mm -hmm. wake works apprenticeship that ties into the program so that's a key rung if you will of the of the ladder and let's move on part of the the idea too is you know moving through the different paths and and you, you've mentioned partnerships so i want to kind of conclude on that there's three key partnerships uh, i just wanted to talk about one is which is our partnerships with our great public schools uh wake county public schools and you know right behind your window there is a new facility that would be the site of a IT biotech high school in the future, a next early college high school, but the the dual enrollment opportunities and you know already we have two career uh, our two career um, colleges um, in terms of Northern Wake and Vernon Malone have elements of IT built into them. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that high school connection that that provides such a great opportunity? Yeah, we love working directly with Wake County Public Schools. And so at, at Vernon Malone, we have a high school program um, in simulation and game development. At North Wake, we've got um, an IT service and support uh, degree. And those students um, kind of, they go through their high school, they start taking courses, um, and by staying for a 13th year, they can end up with a tuition-free associate's degree. Um, by the time they graduate, um, they get over half of the way done there by the time they graduate in 12th grade and they could just come over to us or take those credits other places. But there's no reason we encourage the students to stay all the way through that 13th year and complete the associate's degree um, and then go on to either getting a job or or getting a bachelor's degree from somewhere else. Um, the relationship we're building for the high school here on this campus is fantastic. And we also have college and career promise um, students where any student in the, the county with the public schools, homeschooling, charter schools, they can take those CCP courses and, and start working toward a, a degree as well. Uh, and so continuing on the theme of partnerships and educational partnerships, but also maybe the next rung on the ladder, because our goal is to make sure that students don't have to they can go as far as they can go, you know. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that you and our team here at Wake Tech have really worked diligently on the last couple of years has been the university partnerships because the IT degrees are a little different than our traditional transfer degrees, associate in science, associate in arts, because they are driven by our industry partners. They are skill based. They are primarily the the coursework is not primarily general education. It is skill based programming, but the challenge is a lot of times they're not designed for articulation, so they have not articulated. And for a lot of IT students, you know, they don't want to stop with the associate's degree. They want to get that bachelor's degree and keep going. And that's where you've been working with a number of universities to create that seamless process in technology, one, a technology degree to a next technology degree. Can you talk about some of those partners and the work in that regard? Yeah, it, it's really important. And we again, we don't want students to stop out anywhere that they can continue going on. Um, we have a really strong relationship with with ECU. And so a lot of our students in our hardware degrees and our support degrees can choose to go to ECU um, to to continue on for a four year. We have more recently developed relationships with um, UNC Charlotte, with Greensboro, um, with NC a and and NC Central. Um, and, and we're having other conversations too. Like I said, with Shaw, we're talking to Wilmington about some opportunities as well. So we're really trying to be strategic and showing our students that they can go through our degree programs and continue on to a quality bachelor's degree program in all of our areas. And one university that you had a unique partnership, which even built into work-based learning, is our partnership with Northeastern University. Right. I was going to mention Northeastern too. They're they're a great partner. Um, they helped us out to really not only provide opportunities for our students to graduate and to continue on at Northeastern. They also worked very closely with us to strengthen our capstone program and brought some resources in into us. So we're really thankful for that relationship with Northeastern. And then the last part of the conversation here today, so we've been talking about different rungs of the ladder, if you will, the, the short-term training and how it can walk into degrees, dual enrollment, how it can walk into degrees, um, the moving from us to the universities, but the planks that really ha hold this together is the tight bond with our employers. And we're so fortunate in the Research Triangle region to have so many strong technology employers 
who are looking to hire our students and who work with us in that regard. But that means we've got to work hand in glove with them. And you've been a real leader in that regard. Your provost council engagements. Talk about what that means in terms of that really, you know, it's all hands on deck involvement with our employers to meet their targets. And in that regard, make sure our students are prepared for their jobs. That's right. And, and it's, it's, it's really important. You know, we, we have a, we respond to their needs and um, we have the different areas we touch base with our partners. Every one of our programs has an advisory committee. And those are usually kind of the line managers, the people that know exactly what's going on with the jobs, with getting the work done. And they're the ones that are likely to hire our students directly. So every one of our program areas has an advisory committee, um, seven to 10 members that, that really kind of guide our programs and provide those opportunities and act as mentors and things like that for our students. I set up the provost council because I want to stay connected with kind of the the senior leadership, C-suites, kind of uh, people at these companies to to stay in contact and let them know about the bigger picture. And they're the ones that can create opportunities for for work based learning to to work with their HR departments to to look at hiring practices and make sure that our associates degree students are getting the same consideration for jobs that bachelor's degree students traditionally have. So by working with those senior leaders, we're able to do that. And then through work-based learning, we provide direct supports as well into the company. So by working with work-based learning and apprenticeships, the provost council and the advisory committees, we have three different ways that we stay connected to all the businesses and I take a look at all of those to really make sure that we're able to be responsive and meet their needs. Well, Keith, I appreciate your time. You know, our region, the Research Triangle region is one of the largest tech hubs in the country and Wake Tech is one of the largest feeders for the largest tech hubs in the in the country and you're a thought leader in making sure that we are doing what we need to do to prepare our students with the skills and the education to move forward and to, to claim those jobs. And so thank you for your work. Thank you for your team's work. And uh, just keep doing what you're doing. It's, it's great work. Uh, you're showing us what we mean by ladder economics at Wake Tech. Great. Thank you so much. And I, I too want to thank everyone that works with me on these. We're, we're a great network of supports for everyone in the community. Thanks again to Dr. Keith Babuschek, our Provost of Information Technology Programs and Chief Campus Officer of our RTP campus for joining us on this episode of the We Are Wake Tech podcast. I'm your host, Scott Rawls, and we'll see you back here next month for our next episode. And in the meantime, you can connect with me on Twitter at Wake Tech Prez. Subscribe to the We Are Wake Tech podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Our podcast is also available on the college website at podcast.waketech.edu and our YouTube channel. Until next time, take care, and we look forward to seeing you next month. I'm Lori Clowers with another sign of nudging toward normalcy at Wake Tech. In-person campus tours are back. Wake Tech is planning to resume full operations this fall, so now's a perfect time to come for a first-hand look at the campus that's best for you. Make your reservation at visit.waketech.edu. Wake Tech will help lead the race to 5G. The college now offers a short-term telecommunications tower technician course that could lead to an apprenticeship and permanent employment. Tower climbers are in high demand for work on cell, public safety, and other telecommunications towers across the country. Funding through Wake Works covers the cost of tuition, and the training takes place at Tower Engineering Professionals in Raleigh. Visit wakeworks.waketech.edu. And speaking of Wake Works, many thanks to Credit Suisse for its $250,000 commitment to Wake Works apprenticeship. The donation will help the program expand to offer apprenticeships to more young people in our community. And Wake Works Propel continues to train folks who are unemployed and underemployed with short-term training for high-demand jobs. Scholarships pay for most, if not all, expenses, so it's a fantastic opportunity. From healthcare to IT to skilled trades and public safety, visit propel.waketech.edu and pick a field that interests you. 
Wake Tech welcomes Dr. Jamie Wicker as the new provost for public safety education. Dr. Wicker oversees both degree and non-degree programs and daily operations at the public safety education campus. Welcome also to Robin Pate. Wake Tech's new assistant athletic director was previously with the K. Yao Cancer Fund and spent 25 years at NC State University where he worked with the legendary women's basketball coach. Have you received your COVID-19 vaccine yet? Wake Tech has signed on to the National College Vaccine Challenge. As a vaccine champion college, Wake Tech is committing to doing all we can to get our campus community vaccinated. And finally, applications are currently being accepted for fall semester. If you haven't submitted yours yet, you can do so online at apply.waketech.edu. And if you're not sure about your major, pick up a career focus magazine at your nearest library or Wake Tech campus. In the back, you'll find the complete list of Wake Tech programs from A to Z. And that's your Wake Tech News Update. <music>
the college, we have our own cybersecurity center page that has some tips for uh, the public to try and protect themselves. Thank you for listening to the We Are Wake Tech podcast. Join us next month for more insightful conversations about the programs and people of Wake Tech and how the college changes lives every day. Be sure to subscribe to your favorite podcast app to have each episode delivered right to your computer or mobile device. For more, find us at podcast.waketech.edu. To learn more about Wake Tech's exceptional educational opportunities, visit waketech.edu.